I'm Jackson Pierce and this video is about my trip to the doctor's office today. And also that whole Wall Street Journal article thing. I went to the doctor today. This is a pretty big deal for me because I never ever go to the doctor. So I was already in kind of a bad mood when I walked in that I was even at the doctor's office. And then this happened. I see you listed author as your profession. Yeah, yeah, I actually, I write young adult books. They're sort of ages 12 to 24, but I have readers of all ages. That's so exciting! My kids are really big readers. One of them's 13. Do you think your books will be good for her? Well, if she's a big reader, then yeah, probably. Ooh, that is such a relief to hear you say because I feel like when I go to the bookstore, every book I see is about vampires. And if it's not about vampires, it's about werewolves, you know? I mean, she doesn't need that. What are your books about? It's about two sisters who fight werewolves. Right, um, so, so no allergies then, no allergies, huh? She was super, super embarrassed, which I found so funny that it was actually kind of hard for me to be that mad at her for it. I also found it alarmingly fitting that we were having that conversation because not 10 minutes before, I'd been sitting in the waiting room listening to Maureen Johnson defend young adult literature to a Wall Street Journal columnist. Most of you already know about this, but just in case you don't, here's a recap. The Wall Street Journal recently published an article in which the columnist talked about how difficult it was as a parent to go to the bookstore and try to pick out a book for your teenager, only to discover that all of the books on the shelf for teens had really dark topics like race and incest and cutting and bulimia and all of these super dark things. The article questions the need for darkness in YA and speculates that dark books like that might lure an otherwise happy kid to be depressed. Now let's ignore the fact that the Wall Street Journal article is just flatly wrong. There is plenty of dark YA, but there's also plenty of light YA and plenty of in-between YA. What really bothered me about the article and about what my doctor said was these adults making the presumption that they know what another person, specifically a teenage person, needs. When I was a teenager, the thing that frustrated me, the thing that made me feel hopeless and ugly and worthless was not bullies or self-image or self-doubt. It was adults dismissing me. I assume they were speaking from a place of experience usually, you know, they knew that the breakup I was devastated over would soon pass, but that didn't mean it wasn't real to me, that it didn't hurt really badly at the time. And even though they were my parents and teachers and coaches, they couldn't possibly understand what I needed because they're not me. I was a pretty happy teenager overall, but I still had a lot of questions that adults in my life just couldn't answer, needs they couldn't fulfill. I wanted to know what it was like to be a drug addict and have an eating disorder and have a loved one die and fall in love. I saw my friends going through these things. I saw the world going through these things and I needed to understand them. I needed to make sense of them. Books didn't make me wallow in darkness. Darkness made me wallow in books and it was books that showed me there is light at the end of the tunnel. Teenagers choose the books they need. Everyone chooses the books they individually need. And we might not always understand why do you choose these books or why didn't you choose those books or why would you want to read something dark or why would you want to read paranormal romance, but that doesn't really matter because we can wonder and point fingers at publishers and authors and society for making teenagers want these dark books, but that doesn't change the fact that that dark book fulfills a need in a teenager that we can't possibly understand because we are not them. So before you tell your kid that they can't read a certain book, before you write an article warning everybody about the death and depravity in YA, consider the fact that teenagers are not seven-year-olds. Their needs are more complex than Teddy Graham's and bedtime stories. Their needs might be more complex than you can understand well-meaning as you are. It is pure arrogance for anybody to assume what somebody else needs out of a book. So get out of their way. Get out of their way, let them read. All right, thank you for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow.